Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you major news developments from around the world. Our headlines Chileans approved drafting a new constitution. Students protest across Europe against government's insensitivity amid COVID 19 surge. Thousands mark the anniversary of popular protests in Iraq. Indonesian trade unions call for bigger mobilization against omnibus law. And Cuba faces new hurdles as US blocks foreign remittances to the country. In our first story on Sunday, Chileans approved the drafting of a new constitution with an overwhelming majority in the national plebiscite held in the country. With 99.02% of the votes counted, Chileans decided by a resounding 78.27% of the votes to replace the constitution. The current constitution was written and imposed in 1980 under the military dictatorship of General Augusto Pinochet. Regarding the type of body that will write the new constitution, Chileans chose the option of a constitutional convention with an immense majority of 79.04% of the votes. This constitutional convention will comprise entirely of members elected by citizens for this task and will have an equal number of female and male participants. The option to reject any change in the constitution received only 21.73% of the votes. The option for the new Magna Carta to be written by a mixed convention obtained only 20.96% of the votes. The mixed convention would have seen half the members of the framing body being elected from the existing Congress. Over 85% of overseas voters living in 65 countries also supported the drafting of the new constitution, with more than 75% of the votes counted. The voter turnout was over 50% and is the highest since the return of democracy in Chile in 1990. Following the announcement of the results, preliminary results, tens of thousands of people gathered at the Dignity Plaza in the capital Santiago to separate the victory. In addition, on the telephone tower, the tallest building in the centre of the capital, the word rebirth was projected. In other cities of the country as well, citizens, social movements and progressive political parties took to the streets and celebrated the results and the victory of the people. Several social and political leaders and organisations from across the continent congratulated the Chilean people for their massive victory in the plebiscite. Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro was one of the first leaders to congratulate the people of Chile. He also commemorated former Chilean President Salvador Allende, who was overthrown in a military coup in 1973. The former president of Bolivia, Evo Morales, and the former president of Ecuador, Rafael Correa, also praised the Chilean people's decision. In our next story in Europe, the student community is rising up to demand safer conditions and allocation of resources in the wake of a new spike in COVID-19 cases in the region. Concerns have been raised regarding the opening of several universities and schools without proper safety measures and protective equipment. This has put many students at risk of exposure to the pandemic. On Saturday, student and youth groups and trade unions protested across Italy around the slogan, We will not pay for the crisis. Demonstrations were also held in cities across Europe. Progressive groups including the Communist Youth Front and the Alternative Students' Opposition have already demanded free and public transport for the students who are forced to attend the schools and universities. Groups including the Italian Communist Youth Federation have criticised the government for failing to take the necessary steps towards opening the schools and universities in Italy. In Belgium, in the wake of a new spike in COVID-19 cases, a code red alert has been invoked in many colleges and universities, suspending in-person classes and switching to online classes. Meanwhile, students across France under the leadership of the Union of Communist Students have intensified their campaign for student income during the COVID-19 pandemic. Earlier on October 9th, students along with teachers and parents in Greece had organized massive mobilizations demanding safer classrooms during the pandemic. Security forces' attempts to repress the rally in Athens with brute force had quoted widespread criticism and prov provoked the students to mobilize even more in Greece. In our next story on Sunday, thousands of Iraqis in different parts of the country took to the streets to mark the anniversary of the popular protests last year. The protesters marched in several cities, renewing their demands for the overhaul of the Iraqi political system and to end corruption. Police used water cannons and tear gas on protesters in Baghdad, injuring many of them. In several places, the protests continued through the night and into the early hours of Monday. On October 1st, similar anniversary protests were held in which thousands participated. The protesters gave an ultimatum to the new government led by Mustafa al Qadimi to fulfil the promises of investigation into the killing of protesters or face renewed agitation. After assuming office in May, Prime Minister al Qadimi had announced a tough stand against corruption. He had also declared fresh elections to the Iraqi parliament in June next year. Earlier in March, the COVID-19 pandemic had forced the protesters to discontinue some of the demonstrations. Since last month, however, many of them have been coming out on the streets again. The Iraqi Communist Party also issued a statement in support of the protesters, stating that October 25th, 
is not just an occasion for the remembrance of martyrs, but also a moment of persistence. More than 500 people were killed in the protests which broke out in Baghdad and in cities across the south of the country last year. The protests were against the failure of the government to provide basic amenities, jobs, as well as against widespread corruption and rising poverty in the country. The protesters also demanded an end to all foreign intervention in the country and an overhaul of Iraq's political system. The then Prime Minister Adil Abdul Mahdi was forced to resign as a result of the protests. We now go to Indonesia where on Saturday the Confederation of Indonesian Trade Unions, KSPI, declared that the controversial omnibus job creation law will be met with massive countrywide protests. It is expected that President Joko Widodo, who is also known as Jokowi, will give his assent to the law in the coming days. Faced with this possibility, trade unions in Indonesia are planning for future protests and a legal battle if necessary. KSPI's declaration came a day after representatives of the President's office stated that the review of the law had been completed and that assent is expected to be given by October 28th before the deadline. Widodo's government had advocated for and drafted the sweeping omnibus law, claiming that it will give rise to 9 million jobs. The law, however, actually amends and replaces dozens of federal protection to environmental and labour rights, thus weakening them. In a public statement, KSPI Chairman Syed Iqbal said that the 800,000 member strong trade union confederation will stage protests beginning from November 9th until the law is repealed. He added that the union is still open for a dialogue with the government. The President has a 30-day time limit to give assent to the bill which was passed by the People's Representative Council, that is the lower house of the Indonesian parliament. While protests are expected to begin soon, the KSPI is also planning to petition for a judicial review of the bill at the Constitutional Court. The union will also seek to pressure the two opposition political parties in the DPR that have opposed the bill, that is the Democratic Party and the Prosperous Justice Party, to push for a legislative review of the law. A legislative review, much like a judicial review, empowers the national legislature to review, amend or strike down part or whole legislation once it has been passed. According to the Jakarta Post, however, the two parties seem less inclined to follow that route to challenge the law, considering that it has often ended up being a tedious and long-drawn process. Sporadic protests against the omnibus law have been going on since the bill was introduced in February. These protests gained massive intensity after it was passed in the DPR in a controversial manner, with little debate or deliberation earlier this month. The government has responded to the protests with repression, with nearly 6,000 arrested so far, including journalists, students and activists. Several cases of intimidation of journalists have also been reported. And finally, on Friday, the Office of Foreign Assets Control, OFAC, of the United States Department of Treasury released a new measure against sending remittances to Cuba. This comes as part of the new wave of policies adopted by the Trump administration against the communist country. The amendment will restrict any transaction with entities on a so-called Cuba restricted list. This is a State Department list that includes more than 200 Cuban entities and sub-entities. The list includes entities which process and distribute remittances on the island, such as FinCIMEX, AIS, CIMEX and others. In September, the Trump administration had previously limited the possible amount of shipments to only 1,000 per quarter. In February, Western Union had suspended financial transfers to Cuba from anywhere globally except the United States. Responding to these measures, the Cuban Minister of Foreign Affairs, Bruno Rodriguez Parilla, declared that it reaffirms, to quote him, that there are no limits for a criminal government in imposing policies that limit contacts, communication and mutual aid between the families of both countries. According to the Cuban representative, the United States government has intensified in an extreme and unprecedented way the blockade on the island, taking advantage of the COVID-19 pandemic. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more news from across the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch. Yeah, cantar, que vamos a triunfar.